What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Quick little live stream here. I have an unboxing to do, you guys. Uh, actually, I got a couple of packages that showed up today uh, so that we can finish off on these projects that we have. Um, as you can see, wearing my new Hanger Rat merch that you can get exclusively from Pilot Ryan. Pilot Ryan Media, Teespring Store. Guniak, what's up, man? What's going on, dude? Um, bada bing, bada boom, man. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, man. Uh, I'm doing a t-shirt order on the 1st of November, and I'm going to get you back with a t-shirt, man. Um, but, yeah, I got a couple of packages here to un unpackage. A couple of things came from uh, China. Um, but first, we're going to get into this Guniac center burner. I'm going to go grab my extension cord real quick and my servo tester, and we're going to check this bad boy out. Hold on one, one, one second, guys. All right, I don't need to un unwind it all the way. That. Um, Schnikes. Um, I got to plug this computer the pc battery's running running low hannah oh, is that pigtail in the closet too oh my god i didn't check the pc battery before i started guys All right, so we'll get rid of that. There it goes. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, so we'll just do the unbox first, and then I'll unplug it for a short minute to do uh, to check out te to do the test on it. Um, I'm gonna go grab my knife, which is down in the truck, the one that I need. Kind of an overkill for this, but oh well. This is awesome, man. Um, Super awesome. I heard Pilot Ryan's also got one on the way as well. Oh, wait a minute. Is this the center burner? Oh, no, you guys. This is not the center burner. That's not the center burner, you guys. Shit. This is my stuff from Motion RC. God damn it. So the center burner will probably be here tomorrow then. Um, God damn it. This is just some stuff that I ordered from Motion RC. It's my spar for my freaking. Um... God damn it. Well, I'm going to have to change the title of this then. Um, this is my spar that I lost from my um, my Flightline Corsair. So I got, I got a spot, my spar back. I'm so sorry, you guys. I totally misled you guys on this. This is this is crazy. I'll have to retitle this. Um, and then just some hobby coat, you guys. I got some hobby coat <clears throat> so that I can hobby coat the the tiger cat. Shit, Guniac. Man, I am so sorry, you guys. I I didn't I just looked at the box looking like this. And it looked just like the picture that Guniac sent me. It does. It actually looks just like the picture that Guniac sent me. So I didn't even look at the label. I just I just assumed that this was the box that Guniac sent because it's actually in a box just like this when he's when he took the picture of it. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Guniac. It'll be here. It'll be here. Um, it'll be here in the next day or so. I guarantee it. Um.
Here's one of the most important things, guys, that we got in this package. Um, this is very, 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 very important. You guys will see in a second what it is. I'll check the messages here in a second. Yeah, man, Guniak, my bad, dude. I, I could have swore that that was the package. It looks just like it, right? It looks just like the box you sent. Ah, look what we have, guys. <laughs> yes. Tiger Cat. These are the Tiger Cat blades, you guys. Reverse and normal. Okay, so this is the reverse pitch. This is the one that I actually need. These will just be spares. And I actually only need one of these. For that. <laughs> it's broke. <laughs> um, damn it, man. So for anybody coming into the live stream right now, guys, what a bonehead mistake. This box looks exactly like the center burner box that Guniak sent because he, he actually took a picture of the box and emailed it to me and showed me the picture of it going out. And this is exactly what the box looked like. So I thought this was the, the center burner. And then I opened it up and there's a, there's a purchase thing from Motion RC. And I'm like, wait a minute, when did Guniak start working for Motion RC? And I'll, oh my God, now I know. That's right. I ordered a carbon spar and I ordered uh, some hobby coat from Motion RC. I forgot all about that. I forgot all about doing that. Oh, well. Well, we got the Tiger Cat blades in, guys. That's good. That means we'll be doing the remaking on that thing tomorrow, probably. Um, I'll actually fix that tonight and get that thing back together uh, so that we can go do that. I would replace them all to make sure that they are balanced. It's probably a good idea. All good, Dave. Thanks, Deuce. Um, old man is here. John? What's up, man? I'm glad you can make it to one of these, man. I know, I know, uh, you've been watching all this stuff on the replay lately. Yeah, the label, Gooniak. The label looks wicked similar, right? I mean, it looks wicked similar. Damn, man! I didn't even look at it. I just saw the cardboard box, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's it. That's got to be it." Um, but one more thing is here, you guys. A little surprise. From my buddy Shadow Up RC sent me. As a matter of fact, we're doing a trade. That's basically what this is. What this boils down to. Me and me and uh, Shadow Ops doing a trade. And the trade is, I'm sending him the old power system that was in this Mig 17, the 6S system, and he sent me. I'll show you as soon as I get the box open. Look at that. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to take them all out, Eric. Hold on a second. Oh, I thought there was only two. There's actually three here. Damn, Eric. You serious, bro? <laughs> All right. So, three Admiral gyros are Admiral receivers with built in gyros. Right there. And there's actually three of these here, guys. They are six channel receivers so that I can start using my spectrum radio. Oh, I see Eric. Yep. This is the one that this is the one that you were talking about. That's still not bad, dude. That's that's fine, dude. That's that's still in great condition. It's already got the uh, Velcro on it. That's cool. That's awesome, dude. <clears throat> that is awesome. I cannot wait to use those. Uh, that's going to be cool. That is going to be cool, man. So, yeah, he sent me three of those. I just got to box up that and send it to him now. Um, 
Oh, don't eat the styrofoam, kitty. Come on. What you, oh, don't. He's actually eating it. No, get it. Stop. That's not food. What are you doing, man? You're going to get sick. You're going to poop out. You're going to start floating. Your poop's going to float. Um, so, yeah, guys. Uh, terribly sorry about the misinformation. I will change the title of this video as soon as it, as soon as we're done broadcasting. I'll change it as soon as – because it's going to take a minute before, you know – YouTube looks at it and lets it go. Um, yes, Skip Bill. I spoke to Skip this morning. Uh, Ryan also spoke to Skip this morning as well. Um, Skip did get his F-18 situation sorted. It wasn't in the most desirable fashion, but he did get it sorted out. Um I think things could have been done a different way so that he could have been, you know, here's a printed label. Send us that one back. We're sending you a new one as we speak. We got my credit card information on hold in case I don't send this plane back to you. That's not the way they'll do it. The way they do it is send it back to us. We'll send you a new one. And then we'll have to re rerun your card and do all that. And it's the damn aliens, Dave. I know it is. I know. I keep telling everybody it's the aliens. Nobody wants to believe me. It's it is. It is the aliens. It's all the aliens' fault. Um, but yeah, man, get you guys hanger rat merch. Sorry, baby. Get your hanger rat merch over at Ryan's Teespring store. Pilot Ryan Media Teespring store. Still sounds weird saying it that way. But I'm getting used to it every day. I'm getting more and more used to it. Um, what's going on? They live on the dark side of the moon. Yes. Yes, they do. That's why we've never been back to the moon. We didn't we already didn't we already talk? We already went over this, right? We went to the moon and they're like, listen, we own this chunk of rock. Don't ever come back here again. And we have not sent another shuttle to the moon since. <laughs> the hanger rat ninja yes where is ryan by the way it's the hanger rat ninja oh uh, no these are is an addiction god bless him for all the efforts and glorifying the heaven let's get it on yes sir yes sir john Shadow of the bad demon kitty from hell. Yes. Look at the look on his face, man. Look at him. He's just mad and angry and all the time. Give me love. Come here. All right. You good boy? You being a good boy? No. I'm being a good boy. He's a Maine Coon cat, you guys, and he is just so rambunctious, man. He's up all night, sleeps during the day, and he's just 100% just pissing vinegar, man. I didn't make him eat the foam. He ate the foam on his own. <laughs> I just look down and I hear crunch, 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 and I'm like, what the? He's down there eating. You got a coon cat, Gooniac? Ah, Gooniac's got a coon cat too, man. Yeah, we bought him. When when my wife bought him, she's like, oh, he's, he's half coon cat, half, you know, domestic. This thing looks 100% coon cat to me, you guys. He's got the big old fluffy tail just like a coon cat. The only thing that he doesn't have is like those really long whiskers that come off his face. Like the ones that come out of the ears. He doesn't have those. But he's sneaky, man. You want to see it? Yeah, he is the, He is a good cat. He's a good cat. I'm, I'll give him that. He's just very, very, very high strung. He demands your attention. And when he doesn't get it, he'll bite you. Yeah, I already picked him up. He's like, why are you picking me up again, man? Why are you picking me up again? 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> say hi to YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. Say hi, YouTube. You good boy? Hmm? Are you a good boy? Yes. He's like, yeah, we'll see. Now for that, I'm going to pay for that later. I'm going to pay for that later. I'm going to be laying in bed and he's going to come attack me while I'm sleeping. I'm going to pay for that later. 13 pounds. He's just a kitten. Believe it or not. How, how old is he now, Hannah? I don't know. Six months? Less than six months? Five months? Probably, probably five months. Yeah, he's like five months old, you guys. He's still just a baby. And look how big he is. He looks like a full-grown cat. He's going to be huge. He's going to be a big cat. Coon cats are known for getting big. They're huge. They are massive cats. Um, and he's already big. And he hasn't even passed five months yet. Yeah, he's going to be huge. I know, man. You should see the size of his paws. His paws are massive, man. They're, like, huge. My fat-ass cat is 18 pounds. <laughs> see how fat. <laughs> oh my god he said he's got an 18 pound cat hannah oh my god oh my god 18 pounds holy shit oh my god it's not a full coon cat what look at no no that's what i just told him i said i said they said that he's not a full main main coon cat he's half coon cat and half domestic but he looks like a pure main coon cat, you guys. I, the only thing that's not like, like I said, he doesn't have the long, like super long whiskers that come out of the ears like most coon cats do. He doesn't have those, and he's more of a brown color than that nice gray color that they are. <laughs> and soon a Bigfoot RC plane can comp compete with. Yes, that's right. That's right, Dave. You better watch out, man. You better watch out. He's going to chew on your big foot. I'm going to dive on the fat bastard with my big foot. <laughs> oh, God. oh, my goodness. All right. So, look, we'll, look, we'll just take a peek at the MIG real quick. As you guys can see, I got the front retract put in. Everything's looking good. You got the gear doors hooked up. Everything's good there. I actually, I'm waiting on putting the. Um, I'm waiting on putting the EDF in because once the once the uh, center burner gets here, we're going to be doing an unbox video on that, which I thought that was going to be today. I was super excited. It'll probably be here like tomorrow or the next day, though. Um, so I'm not going to put the power system in this thing until we get uh, the center burner. There's no sense of putting it all in there and then taking it all back out just to put the center burner on. So I'm not going to put the power system in it. But later on, I'll be fixing this prop here. And putting the new putting the new blade on, and um, we're gonna get out and we're gonna fly this thing. But this time, I'm gonna have those damn servo plugs. I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on them. Somebody said hot glue. I got a hot glue gun. Hot glue it a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. That way they don't come out. They stick right there. Also, somebody also said separate the prongs a little bit so that they you know it gives resistance. You know, like open up the prongs a little bit on the receiver. Um, so I'm going to do that as well and put the hot glue on. So we shouldn't have any servo wires falling out of the receiver as we go to take off. Um, that was absolutely ridiculous. I've never had that happen to me before in my entire RC like hobby time. I've never, never had something like, uh, as, as ridiculous as that happen. Um, the cat will stick his face in the tall end of my EDF. You've never seen a cat jump so high when goose the throttle. <laughs> does it every time. He doesn't learn the first time. He just he keeps doing it. That's funny. Dave Marshall, that would be a million hit. Oh my God. Dave, I think Deuce is onto something here, man. You gotta make a video, man. I know you got and I know we're like we're like plotting against your cat right now but that would be awesome that would be awesome here kitty kitty look at the throat look at that oh what's that that's a nice little edf in there wham Whew. cat jumps a mile in the air oh my god that would be hilarious it would be a million hit video um yeah you guys i was super stoked i honestly thought that this was going to be the center burner 
but that's okay. That's okay. My freaking Rambo knife. This thing's cool, you guys. Look, it's actually a legit Rambo knife, you guys. It's got the compass on the inside here. It actually works, too. Usually when you get these, they don't work. They usually come broken. And then in this little tube, you got stitches, fishing line, a fishing hook. You got matches, a striker, um, cotton swab, alcohol wipe. I mean, everything that you could possibly have. And then you got a spring right here that you can kind of use as like uh, to put your fishing string on. That way, when the fish takes the bait, this thing springs and it pulls and it yanks the string back. And what it does is it allows the, the hook to set in the fish's mouth. It's pretty cool. I watched a whole video on how to use this knife and what all the stuff was in there for, what, what it was all there for, what it did. Um, but, yeah, man, probably one of the coolest knives I've ever had. I, I've always wanted, like, a, a real, like, true Rambo knife, and that this is this is it, man. It's also got a fire striker in it, and it also turns into a slingshot. You see this right here? These two prongs sticking out right there. You see those right there? That actually turns into a freaking slingshot. It's got a rubber band. I think it's this right here. Yeah, right here. On the inside, it's also got a throwing knife. There's a throwing knife in the case. There it is. And then there's the rubber band right there, and it turns into a freaking slingshot. It turns into a freaking oh, – oh, we've already set it up, too. We've already used the slingshot and everything on it. But it's an actual freaking slingshot. And then it's got these little ball bearings that it shoots. Probably like the coolest thing. Coolest knife I've ever owned, man. Like super cool, man. I love it. I absolutely love this knife. Unbelievable. Unbelievable knife. And it's ridiculously sharp too, you guys. Yeah, nice. Pretty cool, man. Combat knife type, Rambo knife. It's, I mean, it's 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 cool. I've never owned anything like it in my life. It, it's it's pretty complex. Um, Guniac, sorry about the misinformation, man. I should be uh, assassinated for that. Um, but yeah, I will. As soon as that comes in, we'll get back up here and we'll do an unbox on it. We'll test it out. Uh, and then we'll get the, we'll get it put in the MIG and we'll get everything put together and get the MIG fired up and we'll get what, well, yeah, man, this is going to be sick, man. It's going to be awesome. GB Linden is in here. What's up GB. Fred Barron. What's going on? Hey, Fred, my tiger cat blades came, bro. So if, if you don't want to send those, you don't have to, man, but, um, they came today. So. Um, I really don't see the need of you sending those now. Um, I, I, especially since you have a tiger cat, it would be best that you kept them. So that way you don't, you know, if, if you ever break a prop on yours, you have them. Um, so yeah, um, A demo video of the bench made in Did you mean to say bitch made? Skip, what's up, man? Jeff Nichols is in the house. Oh, my God. All my peeps are here today, man. Shit, I feel guilty about shutting down now. What's going on, guys? Whoa, 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 whoa. Skip, you got your F-18 working? Oh, awesome. 
awesome skip awesome dude awesome man that's that that is uh that's good to hear man i'm glad i'm glad that that worked out for you man because they were going to run you through the freaking hangar with trying to send that thing back and do all that shit Oh, Jeff's going to be putting up a Nitro video this week, his first Nitro video. Negative reverse from the factory. Huh. Skip's the man, dude. It, it, listen, man, Skip's been doing this for so long. If it's an issue that can be figured out, he'll figure it out. Sometimes you just got to sit back away from it for a while, not pay attention to it. Go do something else. Relax. Do whatever you do. And then... Something inside of you will say, I'm going to go and tinker with it now. And then when you go back to tinker with it, you figure it out. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it's always been with me. I walk away from it. If something's frustrating me, frust being frust uh, I'm frustrated by something with an RC plane, I'll walk away from it. And then I'm smoking a cigarette and I'll be thinking about it and I'll be like, oh, duh, let me go try that. Oh, sure enough, that's what it was. Good for you, Skip. I am glad that... You got that taken care of, man. I knew you'd figure it out. You're too damn smart. You've been in doing this hobby for too long to not to not have been able to figure it out. What's up, Mr. Weaven? A manager at eFlight called Skip and said, hey, let me help you out with your issue. You want to know why? Because we know that you're a big YouTuber and the success of this plane on your channel is probably going to sell a bunch of planes for us. So we want to make sure that this goes right. Let me see if I can help you, Skip. Something like that, Skip? Did it go like something like that? <laughs> Not exactly, but exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Victor Shameless says that he's here, but he's still at work. Skip is a good dude, man. I've known Skip ever since I started this hobby. Ever since I started YouTube, Skip was like the first person that I became friends with in YouTube, in the YouTube community. Me and Skip go back to the very beginning, four or five years ago. Um, Skip and I have been friends for a long time. And uh, he's one of the best friends that a person could possibly have, you guys. So if you ever have a question in regards to an RC plane or something of that matter, he's definitely someone that you should have on speed dial because he's a very intelligent person when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to check out Skip's videos after this. I know there's a collage of them. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to take some time to watch those and uh, check his videos out. Um, is he still in here? I'm glad he stopped in, though. I'm glad he stopped in. That was good for him to stop in. Skip, you still here, man? Oh, he probably just jumped in real quick to let us know that he got it working. He's probably tinkering with it now and getting his rates set up and stuff like that. Or he's doing what I would do after figuring out something like that and just step away from it for a little while. There's nothing worse than being pissed off at a plane before you have to go out and maiden it. I mean, there's just nothing worse than that. If it's a pain in the ass to build, there was electrical issues and you have to take more time than you needed to take putting it together or fixing it, especially if it's a plug and play. Um, and then, then the maiden day comes and you're just not as excited about the maiden as you would be if things would have gone smoothly. Yes, Skip's video where he paints the inside of his inside of his uh, the tail of his plane silver and then puts the center burner in. That is an awesome video. He did that on his L thirty nine, um, and um, unfortunately, that L thirty nine ended up crashing due to something uh, 
something happened with the radio. I think he hit a throttle cut or something on the radio on accident. Uh, and he ended up losing that first one, but he did buy another one and he redid it. And, um, he went out and remade it. Uh, however, he had the camera. He thought the camera was rolling and it wasn't. Uh, so his video consisted of him putting all the stuff in it, getting it ready to fly. And then he started to play, which is his voice alerted. So he says, okay, Garmin. And then it starts recording. Well, it was already recording and he stopped the recording. And then at the end of his flight, he said, okay, Garmin. Well, that started the recording back up again. And all the video was, was him putting his plane in the truck and driving it home. And it recorded the whole way till he got to his house. So yeah, he, he didn't get the, he didn't get the video on that one. Um, I've done that myself. I've done that. I have done that. I can't tell you how many times. Yeah. You didn't really see the plane going down. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty far out. Um, I don't know how he does that, man. He's, he's, he, he can fly. I don't, I don't, I can't see that. I can't see that. Well, I can't see that well, but for some reason he's pretty darn good at it, man. He can see that thing all the way out there. Like you watch his videos and it's like, damn, that thing's way out there. Um, but he can see him, man. He's, he does, he does his thing, man. He knows what's going on. All right, Eric. No, you didn't miss an unboxing. This, I thought the center burner was here. It wasn't the center burner. It was my stuff from Motion RC, which was I bought myself some hobby coat so I can coat the MiG-17 and coat the um, the Tiger Cat. My Tiger Cat blade showed up. So there's the Tiger Cat blades, reverse and regular. And then Eric with Shadow Ops RC. Sent me not one, not two, but three Admiral Gyros, six-channel Admiral Gyros, so that I could start using my Spectrum radio that I got from Michael Roshka. Um, and in return, I have to send him the old power system that was in this, the 6S power system that was in this MIG. I'm sending that to him. Um, so, no, you didn't really miss anything. This was supposed to be like the center of attention was supposed to be the center burner. I thought it was the center burner. It's not. That'll probably be here tomorrow, you guys. Uh, I was super excited. I thought that that was the box. And then when I opened it up, there's a receipt for Motion RC that says thank you. They do that with every purchase that you make. And I'm just like, this is not the center burner. <laughs> um, also in that Motion RC stuff was the uh, carbon spar. I had to reorder a carbon spar for my flight line Corsair. So there it is. Um yeah, guys. Um, see that dude's not sure if you ever feel just completely uncomfortable during a flight. I get bored and quit the hobby if I do. Yeah, that's one thing that I haven't done, man, is gotten bored with this hobby. I absolutely love it. Um, I don't like crashing and having to rebuild planes, though. I don't. If I crash a plane and it takes a little bit of damage and it's just cosmetic fixing, that's that's one thing. But when you total a plane, there's nothing more. There's nothing more hurtful in this hobby than when you watch your hard work go plummeting into the ground and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so I guess if there was one thing that I can't stand about the hobby, it's like, like when I flew this MIG tail heavy, I knew right away that something wasn't right. It wasn't balanced. And I just knew that things weren't going to go very well. Something was going to go wrong and it did. And you watch your beautiful plane plummet into the ground and just, break apart and it's probably one of the most disheartening things that can happen to you in this hobby yes the walk of shame jeff absolutely man no no pilot likes doing that um yeah it's hurtful it is hurtful you know you work so damn hard on these things to get them ready to fly and get your your rates put in and you know put the kit together like this was this right here was a re-kit this was actually a kit guys this these two fuselage halves were not even put together nothing was glued together on this thing as you can see the front cow is still not even on it yet uh that's because i'm painting it red and getting some graphics from cali uh we're gonna red star this thing we're gonna put the red star scheme on it 
but we're going to leave the paint scheme this, the way it is. GB Linden and Josh going to hook up and go flying together. That would be sick, you guys. Get some video of that for sure. That would be sick. Six or seven years and still never got bored. I actually find it relaxing and therapeutic. Me too, Deuce. That's why I do it, man. That's why I do it. That's why I do it, my man. Oh, on the RF8 real flight simulator. Okay, ah, I got you now. You guys can, you got, oh, you can fly together on real flight? I didn't know you could fly together on real flight. I'm going to get RF8, dude. I don't have a flight simulator, and I should, you guys. I should have a flight simulator. Multiplayer, bro. Oh, my God. No way. That would be sick. It helps, Dave, and you'll be – yeah, okay, yeah, it does. Yep. Eric, absolutely, man. Never too late. Oh, no way. No, I know, dude. RF – has anyone tried the RF9 yet? So there's a real flight nine out already? Man, I want to fly that Viper bad. What Viper? Which one? What's going on, Bledsoe? How's it going, man? No kidding. I had no idea, dude. I had no idea, GB. Real Flight 10 came out and stressed out people's computers, and now RF9 is out. Real Flight 9. We could combat and dogfight. Get out. Tim Tutant wants a wrench. He says, I need a wrench. What he meant to say was, I want a wrench. All right, this is the last wrench I'm handing out until we at least get to 700 subs. Out on headphones and talk to my local bus. <laughs> you got it, Tim. <laughs> it's good to be in an RC club or better to rogue flyer. All right. You're probably going to get a bunch of mixed opinions on this, RC Stinger. It is good to be a part of a flying club because you get taught the right way to fly. When you're a rogue flyer like me and you fly circles around your head, that's not necessarily a good thing. What a RC club is going to do is it's going to teach you how to fly properly. But at the same time, like, like Josh just said, it's also good to get out and fly on your own and do that rogue flying. Um, there are some things that are not allowed at a flying club that you can do when you're out flying in a park or in a big field. Um, so yeah, they both have their, their ups and they both have their downs. The downfall about flying at a flying club is that the politics, I hate politics. Can't stand them. Don't want them. Don't need them. Ball them up, throw them in the trash can. And that's basically what a flying club is, is a lot of politics, a lot of hierarchy. You know, if you're not flying with a spectrum radio, you get laughed at, you know, shit like that. You know, just stuff like that. It's just it's just dumb stuff. And when you're out flying by yourself, you don't have to deal with any of that crap. Uh, now, that's not to say that you can't find a club where people aren't like that. 
you know, that shit's not that not welcome at, you know, some flying clubs, you know, and there is no hierarchy and there is no order of operation. You just keep your plane out in front of you. Don't fly over other people's heads and you're good. Nobody's going to mess with you or talk to you or do anything, you know, crazy. Um, but at the same time, going out and flying on your own with no one around you and just being by yourself is probably one of the more therapeutic and relaxing things that you can do. You know, it's just me and my son. He's filming. I'm flying. You know, there's nobody in the background yapping or telling you what to do or, or uh, yelling at you because you're not flying in a certain pattern or something like that. You know, you're not going to get that when you're out flying by yourself. Um, you go to a flying club if you want to fly discipline and you want people to be checking your every move. You go rogue fly. If you just want some tranquility and some peace and quiet and you just want to have fun flying your plane and you don't want to be bothered. Josh is right. Flying at an RC flying club can be nerve wracking because you feel as though that all eyes are on you while the plane's in the sky. And that can make you more nervous while you're flying, which can lead to you crashing a plane. Um, case in point, my sky sword or AKA the ground sword, my sky sword. I took off ailerons were too touchy. I knew how to fly. I know how to fly the damn plane. I knew, I knew what I was doing. I knew what I did wrong when I crashed it, but it was the fact that the eyes were on me. I was nervous because the plane was twitching very, very quickly. It wasn't reacting the way I would want it to react. Um, I over rotated in my turn and I put the thing into the ground and no more sky sword. Actually, the Sky Sword is still with us. I just don't. I haven't, I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet. My son thinks that we should try to put it back together, and I'm just like, there's just no way. This thing, I've already ripped stuff out of it and used servos for other things. And um, GB Linden, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. And it's not that – I like some of the guys that are at our flying field. There's a few of those guys that I wish would come and fly with me at my field. And that would be fun. You know what I mean? But you're right. There's nothing worse than having another man tell you what to do. And at one of those flying fields, that's just what's going to happen. I cannot stand it when another man looks at me and tells me, oh, you can't do that. What the? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean I can't do that? And it's probably something that isn't that big of a deal. But this has happened to me time and time again at my flying field, our RRC flying club. Um, was it enough to piss me off to never go back? No. No. I'll still go back there. As a matter of fact, I have to go make an appearance out there one last time before they shut down for the winter. Um so um, I'm going to take the Tiger Cat. I'm going to take this MIG. I'm going to take my uh, F, my Flightline Corsair. And I'm just going to go out there with a, with a bunch of packs, and I'm going to fly the crap out of these planes one last time before they shut it down for the winter. So um, Yeah, but at the same time, Tim, do you want to trust the people at your flying field if you get hurt? Or do you want to just drive yourself to the ambulance or to the hospital and take care of it yourself? Some of these, I mean, some of these guys that, that fly airplanes in their, their actual pilots and stuff, well, they, just because they're pilots, that doesn't make them a doctor. <laughs> they're not doctors, Tim. They're not doctors. No, he's right. If you get hurt at the flying field, you got aid right away. You got people that can help you. If you get your finger cut off, you know, there's someone there that can take your finger and put it on ice. I mean, those aren't things that you're going to be thinking of uh, if you injure yourself. Um, so, yeah, there are benefits. Um, it's that's a, that's exactly what it is, too, Michael. It's the politics. It's the politics that I don't like. OK, so I showed up to my flying field one day. And so they have these dues that you got to pay every year. 
And I guess, I guess the cycle had turned over and I guess I hadn't gotten my dues in yet. Wasn't that I didn't have the money. I just haven't, hadn't given it to the people that run the place. So I'm calling around. I'm asking, Hey, can I get into this place? You guys give me the code to the gate so I can get in. Nobody was willing to work with me. I had just one day off. I had driven an hour to get here or 45 minutes or so to get here. Um, I had that one day to come out there and do it. And I got turned away. So I was really pissed off and it was all over 75 bucks. Now what they'll tell you is that it wasn't about that, but in fact, it, it, what it did boil down to was the fact that I didn't pay my dues for that month or for that year. And I told him, I said, listen, if it's about dues, if it's about money, I said, I'll give it to you guys the next time I see you. But I only got one day to do this. Can you let me in? And this is where the politics come in. There was like 50 different phone calls. Sorry, I'm exaggerating. There was like five different phone calls made just to get back to me. I sat there for another hour just for someone to say, no, we're not going to let you in. But if I would have paid the $75, I would have gotten the code. I would have been allowed in. They didn't want to say yes or no on that. But I already knew the answer. It was yes. It's like, dude, then somebody drive down here and grab 75 bucks from me. Because, like, I literally have one day to do this. And, um, yeah. So, the, it's the politics. When I could have just drove to my field, flew my planes, went home, Saved a bunch on gas, saved myself some time and a headache and arguments with people that I had no business arguing with because I just wasn't going to win. So um, what it boiled down to was the instructor of the place, really cool guy. We're like really good friends now. Oh, I wouldn't say like really good friends, but, you know, every time I show up there, he's, you know, you know, we're excited to see one another. His name's... Uh, his name's Eddie, and you may have seen Eddie in some of my videos that I have. I've got a couple of uh, Eddie's videos where he's flying the Abani, a um, couple of videos where he's flying a nice P-47 and stuff. Um, and what it boiled down to after talking to Eddie is it is politics. It was politics, and that's what it boiled down to. It was politics. And I was like, Eddie, I don't deal well with politics or people for that matter. So me – showing up there and not getting the code. I didn't want to have to deal with anyone. I just wanted to get the code, go in, fly, leave, lock up the gates on the way out and leave and go home. And what happened was completely against what I, what I stand for and what I'm about. I did not want phone calls to be made. I didn't, I didn't want it to go that far. I just wanted to see if someone could let me in. I'll lock the gates up on my way out. Next time someone sees me, I'll give them the 75 bucks and we're good. Boy, they weren't having it. They were not having it. And that's when I explained to Eddie, I said, I don't deal with that kind of stuff, man. I don't deal with that stuff. I don't deal well with that stuff. I was like, this, this there's so many different ways that this could have been, that this could have been um, dealt with where I could have gone in and flown my planes and then somebody could have come and grabbed some money off me or given me a dress. I would send you some money or now they have an option where you can pay it online, which is even better. Um, they didn't have that. I don't think when, at that time when I was trying to get in that day, but yeah, it's, a, it's the politic thing, man. So uh, typically, I just like to go over to my flying field. I know I'm not covered there. That's the other thing you guys have to worry about. Uh, if you have AMA, which every one of you guys that fly should have AMA. Um, if you don't have AMA and you're out flying around, um, you're wrong. You should have AMA <clears throat> because AMA will at least cover if someone if you hurt them. The other thing is, is that AMA is not going to cover you flying at a rogue field, you guys. AMA is only going to cover you if you're flying at a sanctioned AMA field. Remember that. You're not covered unless you're flying at one of those fields. If you crash your plane into a car or someone at a, at a regular recreational park, that's on you. That's out of your pocket. That is all on you. AMA is not going to cover that. So... Just remember that. Keep that stuff in mind, you guys. Um, not to mention nowadays you have to have FAA stuff too as well, guys. You guys have to make sure that you guys are signed up with the FAA thing as well. You got to have your numbers and all that stuff. Um, they just figured that they could make extra money on us is what that's all about. Oh, shit. These guys flying RC planes? It's that serious? 
Oh my God, man. Well, let's make money on it. Let's make money off these bozos that want to fly planes around in the sky. I got AAA. Don't need that count. That count. Don't that count? No. AAA doesn't count. <laughs> Triple A doesn't count. You're covered by AMA and at the park. Roy, that's not true. You are not covered. I don't know what the who the hell's telling you that shit. You're not covered by AMA unless you're at a sanctioned field. That's right, and that's like pretty much right, like in the first paragraph of their rules. Either sanctioned AMA field or what is it? If you're on your own private property, that's that's you're covered in those. And if you're at a public field, unless you have special permission to fly there, which is what I have, I have permission to fly at this field that I go to. Told me that AMA has park flyers insurance. Is it a separate insurance? <laughs> I saved a ton on my insurance when I hit reverse and got the hell out the scene. <laughs> yes, deuce. <laughs> Cover up the license plate with some snow. Hurry up. Talk with a rep. There is coverage on parks for everyone that has AMA. Yeah, but you have to pay extra for that. That's not part of the the, the package. That's not part of your your rent. That's something extra. You're gonna have to pay extra for that. It's cheaper. So this, okay, so they have an insurance that covers you if you're a park flyer. You have AMA, you have parks. If you have parks, it doesn't mean you have everything. If you have AMA, you have parks. So I have AMA. I've got the like the most expensive package that they have. It's it's the like Roy, like Roy just said, it's the big boy, the biggest one that you can purchase. So that means I'm covered in parks. JCB67 says park flyers is cheaper, but the planes have to be under 32 ounces. Twenty four. What is it? Twenty four. So it has the plane has to weigh less than a pound. Yes, Deuce. Yes. But can I bundle my home and my AMA and my car insurance by switching to progressive? <laughs> and get one low rate? <laughs> no, he says. No, you can't. No. If you hit someone with your plane, let's face it, you're screwed. Yeah, and so are they. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude. That's why. I'm, okay, so what? Okay, so when I'm flying at that field, I will not put a plane in the sky if there's anyone there. If there's someone on that field walking their dog, sitting in the parking lot, looking at porno mag magazines, um, 
whatever they do in that parking lot when people aren't watching. If there's anyone out there in that field, period, or a car, another car in the parking lot, I will not put a plane in the sky. Not to mention I don't like people watching anyways. Yeah, Roy, I'm the same way, man. I won't fly unless it's just me and Kyle chilling there. If someone pulls in to watch, I sit there until they leave. And I know it kind of pisses them off because they see that plane there and they're like, oh, is that going to fly? Yeah, when you leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to fly as soon as you get the hell out of here. <laughs> Call me battle. Is that you trying to call me in the background, Eric? My phone's all the way in the other room. Hold on. Let me go grab it. Oh. Eric wants his FaceTime. Eric, Eric wants it. He wants his live stream time. Oh, my goodness, buddy. Oh, my goodness, buddy. Let's see. Oh, it was you, Eric. What's up, Battle? Uh, it's not this size. It can only fly. It has to fly under a certain speed. So basically, most planes we fly are illegal for the AMA insurance for at a park. At a park, okay. So unless you're flying like a micro, you guys, like legit, it has to be a micro with a 2S battery or a 1S battery. Unless that's what you're flying, dude, it doesn't. You're. It's not counting. You're not covered. So you got to get a bunch of little micro planes like the micro MIG, the micro Tundra or whatever it is, the yeah, high wing trainer, whatever that's called, whatever. Super slow trainer birds. Yeah, super small. And it has to be under a certain speed too, you guys, is what I've been told. Um, well, at the end of the day, like you were saying. 250 grams per park. Five with no one. Oh, check this out. So, so Jeff, Jeff is over in England, right? Or over in the UK and they don't do things in pounds or ounces over there. It's in grams. He's like, it's sub 250 grams for a park flyer. So 250 grams, 32 grams or 28 grams in an ounce. So that would be, oh, wow. So that means you guys get to have more weight over there where you're at. I'm going to move to, I'm, gonna, I'm moving you guys. I'm moving to Europe. So that's 30, 32 ounces, 16 ounces in a pound, so two pounds. So so the plane has to be under two pounds, basically. The plane has to be two pounds or under. And I'm sorry to say, but this MiG-17, when it's done, is probably like, uh, with, the, with the 8S set up in it, it's probably going to be like an 8 to a 10-pound plane. So definitely nothing. It's all politics and bullshit, you guys. That's what I mean. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's all bullshit politics. We'll cover you if it's a cloudy day, you're flying a three-pound plane on 2S, and it's only your third flight of the day. But we won't cover you if it's sunny out, and there's a dog standing next to you, and there's police sirens in the background, and you're flying a three ounce plane on 5S. That, that, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what I mean. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's so, it's so like fine line bullshit. It's like, yeah. Basically what you're saying is I'm not covered at a park, period. If I smash this into some guy's face, I'm going to end up putting those stitches in there for him. <laughs> I'm going to end up paying for those stitches. I'll just I'll just slip him my VA card and say, bro, here, go to the VA clinic. <laughs> here, take my VA card, go to the VA clinic in Portland, <laughs> and you're covered, dude. They'll fix you right up, dude. Just don't forget my social. <laughs> oh man. Or your last name. 
Yeah, don't forget. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And don't forget the rank what I was when I got out either, because I'll ask you that shit, too. Yeah, they give you the fifth degree when you're at the VA. Oh, yeah, well, they, because there's people that are doing that, bro. There's people that are actually going in there and pretending to be a veteran and taking their credentials and stuff and going in there and trying to get free care. And th that's why they ask you those questions. They'll be like, and what was your rank when you got out? And uh, where did you serve? Which I don't understand, because the healthcare outside of the VA is 100 times better, so people are <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. They can just go to the emergency room. Yeah, come on up. Uh, yeah, come on up. All right, Eric, I'm going to let you go, man. I got somebody that just walked in the door. I'm going to have to stop the screen, too. All right, man. I'll talk with you. All right. You too, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, guys. I'll be right with you. Hold on one second. All right. Thank you, Bubba. Thank you very much. Are we not paying for that now? Uh, Friday. Oh, shit, man. I kind of need more now. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, give me a Friday. Right. Fuck. Oh my goodness all right guys so i'm gonna cut the stream down now man i gotta get out i gotta go to work i gotta i gotta go do something i gotta put some money back in my account all this money i've been spending i gotta put some money back in my account i still have some people that i have to send some money out to so um i'm gonna cut the stream down now and i'm gonna go work for the night you guys um yeah so uh make sure that you go spend money on ama insurance I mean, what's the point, really, if you're only covered in AMA fields under certain circumstances? Like, when I got permission to fly at the field that I fly at, the one thing that they said was, do you have insurance? Well, that depends. And they're like, what do you mean that depends? Well, I do have AMA insurance, but AMA insurance isn't going to cover me if I run one of these bigger planes into a house. You know what I mean? But you have insurance. Yeah. But did you not hear? I'm probably not going to be covered with one of these bigger planes here like this. But you have insurance. You're covered through AMA. Yeah. Okay. That's all we need to know. Okay. So, I mean, they're cool with me doing that. They're cool with me being, you know, just, just to have that credential in your hand that says, yes, you are covered through with AMA through this amount of time, through this amount of time. That's all they care about, really. That's all they cared about. Um, the only thing that makes me nervous is before there was no house right across the street. That whole place was 100% completely open. So if I crashed over here, I was fine. If I crashed over here, I was fine. I wasn't going to hit a house. No way. There was no way in hell I was going to hit a house. Now that there's a house right across the street, that's like nerve wracking because if I lose the signal to the plane and it darts into their house, like I already talked to the lady and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really nervous that I might hit your house one of these times. And they're like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. 
they're like, my son likes seeing, he likes looking out the window and watching you fly. I was like, well, so if I put my, put my plane through one of your windows, oh, we just put a new window in. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. But I still, I'm still nervous as shit flying there. I'm still nervous. Now that that house is there, I'm nervous. I never really was nervous flying there before. And I could take my plane clear across this way and go clear across that way and that way. Now I have a flight pattern that I got to stay in. I can't go flying across the street. I can't fly over their house for God's sakes. No, I can't fly over their house. Um, so there's just, there's just certain things that I have to do differently now when I'm flying there that I didn't have to do before. And that just adds to the element of suspense. Um, and, uh, so AMA started in 1990. Okay, ended someone came upon. It was cool, but <laughs> at least they are cool people. Oh yeah, they're wicked cool, man. Like when I first when I first saw the guy sitting out in front of the place when it was being built, it was an old guy, and he came over and he's like, "Oh, so you fly these here, huh?" And I'm like, "Yep." Yeah. And he goes, "Are you uh, expert pilot?" And I said, "I wouldn't say that." I said, I can get them back up and I can get them down, you know, without causing any issues. And he's like, so you don't fly over here? And I was like, well, I did until that house was built. And he's like, I'm just asking, this is my daughter and son-in-law's house that's being built over here. And I was like, ah, okay, you're not coming over to see these planes. You're coming over here to make sure that I'm not going to be flying them here anymore. I go, well, I got special permission from the town to fly here. So you're going to have to take it up with them. And they're probably going to tell you to go pound sand because I've been flying at this field a hell of a lot longer than that house has been here. And the cops even stop here and watch me fly these planes when they're here, when they, when the cops come around on their, on their patrol and I'm there flying, they stop and watch me fly and they get out and they shoot the shit with me. And so that old guy was pretty much trying to shut me down. And he probably did. He probably did go to the town and they they probably told him to go pound sand. He's like, yeah, well, he knows not to fly over the house. He's not going to fly over the house. He's not using the, the, the runway anymore or the uh, parking lot as a runway anymore. He's actually staying right out in the field. So he's doing everything that we've asked of him and everything that he needs to do to stay within the guidelines of his AMA um, and his the, the guidelines or rules or whatever you want to call them, you know. I'm not taking off or landing within a hundred yards of a house. You know what I mean? Or a uh, hundred feet from a house, you know, I'm staying well with that, well within those boundaries. Um, so they probably just told me, you know what, dude, there's nothing we can do about it. He has permission to fly there. He's been flying there for the last five years before your, your house was built. There's just, we're not going to go tell him he can't fly here anymore. Uh, if he puts one through your window or he puts one into your house, um, I'm sure he'll fix it. You know, pretty much what it boils down to. If he, if he damages anything on your property, he'll fix it. That's, that's, you know, that's the, that's, that's just the way it goes. If he breaks or damages anything, or if he hits a car or if he hits a person, that's, that's on him. He'll take care of it. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. That is. Yeah. Sweet bro. Awesome. Man. All right, guys. So yeah, I'm going to go work. I need to go make some money. Um, I just had somebody stop by that was supposed to pay me some money and they were just telling me that they're not going to be able to pay me. Um, so yeah, that's great. Love that. I love when people do that to me. They they stop by. Hey, uh, you gonna, yeah, well I got, I dude, I, I, I need you to pay me that because I need to go send money to people that I owe. And if you don't give me the money that you owe me, I can't pay the people that I owe. So, and he's like, oh, I'll give it to you on Friday. He could have just texted me and told me he could give me the money on Friday. <clears throat> Anyways, it's all good. It's all good. I don't fret on it. You know what I mean? I, I, I know what it's like to owe people money and, and not have it to give to them at the time. So, um, I don't really give them too much shit over it, but he probably should have known. He could have just texted me and told me that. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, sorry again. I thought this was the center burner today. It's not the center burner. It was just some stuff that I got from Ocean RC. When the center burner gets here, we'll unbox that. We'll get it hooked up. I'll have this ready to go so that we can hook it up and get it going right away. Uh, Skip Bill Arce said, you still up? Wow, dude. Howdy. Skip, love you, man. Yeah, I'm about ready to shut off for the night. Uh, I'm glad you got your F-18 fix, bro. I will call you sometime during the week. So that uh, you can tell me how you did that, man. Um, 
I know that you talked to somebody on the phone. That's what somebody was telling me in here. You talked to a manager. They probably didn't want the bad publicity. They're like, hey, man, this guy's a big time YouTuber. We need to go talk, get his plane fixed before he gives us a shitty review. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, yeah, guys, that's it for me. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC. We will see you guys in the next one. Pilot Ryan's in the house. Late. <laughs> What's going on, man? Um, Ryan, good to see you in here, man. Check out the merch, baby. <laughs> hey, Ryan, make the rat bigger. I'm going to order another one, but we got to make the rat bigger. Can you make them bigger? Can you make the rat a little bigger? Like, like where he starts is fine, but get him like a little wider and a little longer maybe. Can we do that? It wouldn't let me. That's as big as it would let me. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I like it. It's still good. I was just thinking there's still a lot of real estate here. I'm fat, dude. There's a lot of real estate in this shirt. I need a fat rat. <laughs> I need a fat rat, not a skinny rat. Um, <clears throat> we'll be flying the tiger cat tomorrow, guys. My prop blade just got here today. So we'll be flying that tomorrow. Um, Ryan, I, like I told you, I've got some of that hobby coat. You were like, I don't know. You should just use regular poly. Um, I'll try it on a little section of something like a wingtip or something and see what it looks like. If I don't like the way it looks, then I'll just go get some of that water-based poly that you were talking about. Um, but that's it guys. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC. I appreciate you guys showing up. I thought the center burner was going to be here today. That wasn't the case. It'll be here tomorrow. Uh, we'll do an unbox on that tomorrow in the time being guys stay safe, fly safe, fly free or die. And Avoid the clap, Jenny Dugan. <laughs> oh, man. If you don't know what movie that was on, then shame on you. You should know where that movie, what movie that was on. Um, yeah, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.